last old dollar's done gone. My last old dollar's done gone. How can a poor boy get back home when his last old dollar's done gone? I wrote to my girl last night. I wrote to my girl last night. Wrote to my girl, said that I was coming home, but my last old dollar's done gone. My last old dollar's done gone. My last old dollar's done gone. How can a poor boy get back home when his last old dollar's done gone? I've drank and I've gambled all around. I've drank and I've gambled all around. Now the time has come that I want to go back home, but my last old dollar's done gone. My last old dollar's done gone. My last old dollar's done gone. How can a poor boy get back home when his last old dollar's done gone? Now the eastbound train's done gone. The eastbound train is done gone. That train is gone and left me all alone. And my last old dollar's done gone. My last old dollar's done gone. My last old dollar's done gone. How can a poor boy get back home when his last old dollar's done gone? My last old dollar's done and gone. How can a poor boy get back home when his last old dollar's done gone? That was Last Old Dollar, a great old tune, uh, popularised by, amongst others, Bill Monroe. Um, it's a three chord song, but you may have noticed it's not the three chords that we've been using. We've done a lot of stuff with one, four and five. But in this one, we have our one, we have our five, but instead of the four, we have the six. Now we have used the six chord before. If you look back at Lonesome Road Blues, you'll find that that was a one, four, five song, but there was an optional fourth chord, which was the six chord. And it was in the same key, I believe, so it would be exactly the same chord, the E minor. The six chord tends to be minor. So in this one, we're in the key of G. So we have G, our one chord, G, A, B, C, D is our five chord, which tends to be a seven, D seven. And after D, G, A, B, C, D, E, our six chord, tends to be a minor. So we have G, D7 and E minor. The E minor only occurs once at the end of line three. Like many of these songs, the verses and the choruses are exactly the same. It's up to you whether you sing a chorus in between every verse, like I just did, or whether you sing the chorus every couple of verses or just at the beginning and the end. It'll depend on who you're playing with, how long you want the song to last, and whether you've got musicians around you who are going to take solos, because this is a, a very popular jam tune, and it's a great one for bluegrass bands to play, because you can take it in turns to have a banjo solo, and a fiddle solo, and a mandolin solo, and you can build it up into quite a nice showcase for a band. So let's have a look at how it works. We're going to do it in the key of G. One of the reasons we do it in the key of G is that this song is very, very commonly played in the key of G because banjo players like the key of G, mandolin players like the key of G, fiddle players like the key of G. A lot of bluegrass numbers are in a very small number of keys. G is a very popular one. Our one chord is G. Then we have a quick change to our five chord and then straight back to our one chord. And then our one chord again. And this time our five chord for a whole bar. Back to our one chord again. Then we start the next part on our one chord and then it goes to our six minor. Now see how I'm doing that. I've got my one chord here, my G, and I'm just putting my little finger down and I'm putting it on the same string that my index finger is on, but at the fourth fret, the C string, the third string up. I can leave my index finger there because the next chord is G. So I just take my little finger off again. Then I go to my five chord, back to my one chord. So you can see other than that fairly subtle change in the end of bar six, everything is a one chord or a five chord. It's one of the things that makes these songs great for ear training. If you know 
that there is a third chord that only happens once in a particular place, then the rest of the time you start to learn to trust your ear and you know that it's going to either be the one chord or the five chord. What else happens in this song? Well, a big part of this tune is the rhythm. Now really, on the ukulele, I'm taking the role of the mandolin player in a bluegrass band. So do go and watch bluegrass bands playing this and you see what the mandolin player does when he's not taking a solo. It tends to be this offbeat chop. So it tends to go, my last old dollar's done gone. One, two, three, four, like that. It's a bit like a scar rhythm where you play in between the beats, but it's very, very fast. So we have to come up with a way of, of kind of getting our hand doing this. Lots of things are happening. I'll slow it right down. The first thing that's happening is I'm actually hitting on every single downstroke, and it's all downstrokes at the moment. But I'm doing a little strum that's just catching maybe the G, possibly the C, and then my chop. You can either think of it as being on the two and the four, or you can think of it as being on the and of every beat. It depends how fast you're counting the tune. So this tune we're counting one, two, three, four. My last old dollar's done gone. So we're actually playing in between the beats, but we could count the tune twice as fast and just think about playing on the two and the four. It's much better to get a feel for this than have a count going on in your head. So we'll make that feel happen by going little strum, big strum, little strum, big strum. That way my hand can go down, 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 every single one. But it starts off with a little strum that catches a couple of strings, maybe just one string, and then a strum that hits all of them. The other thing that's happening is this hand. I am muting that chord, which means at the moment, I've got my fingers in position, but they're not pressing down. As I strum, that's when I put that tiny bit of pressure on to press those strings down. It's not a big squeeze, it's a tiny little flex. Now you can hear that there's still something ringing. We'll deal with that in a moment. But these three strings, I'm literally putting the pressure on and immediately letting go at exactly the same time as I strum. So that's one thing to get coordinated with your, with your hands. The other thing is, as I mentioned, that that G string that I haven't got a finger on will keep, keep ringing. You may have noticed, and I sometimes, I tell people off for this, uh, bringing your thumb round. I'm not actually bringing my thumb round in order to wrap my hand round the neck, and I'm not fretting with my thumb. And I'm keeping daylight still here, which is important. You can see that, that little space there under the neck. I'm not letting the neck drop into there. All I'm doing is bringing my thumb over just enough so that the pad um, of my thumb just touches the side of the string. And then that chord can be controlled really well. On my D7, I could actually bar that D7 and then exactly the same thing. But it's quite nice on this song to go from a G to a D7 with that nice easy change. Even the E minor is a nice easy change. There's not a lot of movement for your left hand, so why spoil it? So that D7, I'm actually letting my first finger lean over and catch the C string, and letting my second finger lean over and catch the first string. So really, most of the time you're only hearing two notes. Now I can sometimes, sometimes I'll control it like that and sometimes I might let the open strings ring. And these are all little things that you'll start to develop and get comfortable with so that you can vary how your rhythm goes. The E minor is exactly the same as the G. We can use our thumb there and we can put our little finger down to make the E minor and the thumb stop that G ringing out. Let me just break that down really slowly for you. There we go. Now I've controlled that G string. It's not ringing out. Little, big, little, big. Squeeze, 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 squeeze. On every 
free beat I'm squeezing. Please don't squeeze hard. The squeeze is a tiny little movement. It's from touching the strings to letting the strings onto the frets. It's a tiny millimetre or less movement, so don't put too much effort into it. So when you can do that, try doing the D7. Back to the D7. G again. Here comes the E minor. Now you might have noticed I do something different on the E minor. You don't have to, you can keep that rhythm going, but it's just a nice little break. It's how can a poor boy get back home when his last old dollar's done gone? So I let that E minor ring and then go back into my rhythm for that last line. There's one more thing I do on this song, and it's a nice little trick. When you have a chorus that has a first line and a last line that are the same musically, they have the same chords, we can do this kind of looping effect. Rather than repeat the chorus twice at the end, what I do is when I get to the last line of the chorus, I sing that. It's musically the same as the first one, so I then jump straight into the second line of the next chorus. You'll notice it when you go back to the beginning to play along with my song then, but I'll run through it now. The very last chorus or double chorus does this. My last old dollar's done gone. My last old dollar's done gone. How can a poor boy get back home when his last old dollar's done gone? Second line. My last old dollar's done gone How can a poor boy get back home When his last old dollar's done gone And that's how I finished it. I just slid my G chord down one fret and then slid it back again. So that's a nice little looping round technique where instead of playing the last line and then playing the first line of the next chorus Given that they are identical pretty much lyrically, certainly chord-wise, why not pretend that the last line of the first chorus is the first line of the next run round the chorus? And it gives you this nice, uh, it's not just a loop, it's like an overlapping kind of effect and it's, it's really good. It works very well. I hope you've enjoyed this lesson. It's a really good fun song to play and I recommend that you get out there and teach this to your ukulele groups because it's not difficult to play and if you get that rhythm going it's a really really fun one. Audiences like it is one you can tap your foot along to. Hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you again soon. Bye.